Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl Super League Show, episode 3. This week I'm joined by the CCL legend, Crucifer, and we'll be, you know, looking the one game in depth, looking around the league, at the results and tables, what have you. Um, and also, don't forget to check out the website, that you can see all the results there, and watch all the VODs of everybody's made, and uh, we should be getting a link to the tables on there as well soon, so that should be good. Let's get to it. Okay, so here is our featured match of the week. It is Rick Reckless and his Ogres versus Fat and his Pro Elves. Hello, Crucifer. Hello, Jimmy. Um, and from the look of it, I think that Pro Elves should destroy this Ogre team, especially that tackle Mighty Blow Blitz looks scary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> from the look of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Rick chose to receive and beat up the uh, beat up the Proels, and I guess he's just going to try to like two one grind here. Eh? Yeah, that's probably the basic tactic with a team like that. But I have well, almost reliable Augers, so it's like a bash team, properly made, which you just don't have in CCL. <laughs> yeah, like it's crazy, isn't it? Six six block ogres, you're just like never gonna see that until until Blood Bowl three maybe, right? <laughs> Indeed. Oh wow. Pays off with a non turnover. Mm, nothing special, sort of the one I'd say. Probably even on the lucky side for elves. I usually expect to get one out. Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah, I didn't see him behind you know. I usually expect to lose one player as elves against so many mighty blows. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Here it comes, the first one. And a good chance to even up numbers with mighty blow on Gnobla. Except. <laughs> <laughs> Except no. Yeah, it's tricky if you don't, and it's he's got one guard player here, but uh, it's really tricky, isn't it? To hit the ogre like once the ogre's got the ball, it's uh, yeah, it's tricky because you don't want to base him every turn because it'll just smash you with block and mighty blow. <laughs> I don't really know what you're supposed to do for the big the ball up here. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe work on some knobbers and then have a chance. Yeah, or yeah, maybe just, wait for. <laughs> you can also just sit and wait for, for a turn where like a couple of or more Ogres roll one and don't move. Maybe then you have something, but yeah. that's just maybe. Yeah, that's a good point, because he's got the three rerolls and like block and three dice. He's very unlikely to like, uh, you know, fail a block and, and expose himself that way, isn't he? And he's also quite unlikely to fail dodges with them all being 136s, so... So yeah, I guess a, a big bone. They you always get those bonehead turns, don't you? As old as well, like two or three go on the same turn. And then, yeah, maybe just screen up, like because Fatin le left a lot of space here, didn't he? Maybe he should have just not gone so hard in over this side and just tried to keep them, you know, just slow them down, but without getting punched. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I think that it's kind of pointless trying to get behind Ogres. They they have a lot of players to make a cage and. It's not like you threaten them. For like first five turns, they just want to smash you. <laughs> That's it. Wow, he's going for the fouls, Rick. Oh! My God. oh. <laughs> nice. Wow. Except it's not for elves, but. <laughs> yeah, now Fatten's thinking maybe he should have uh, appled the first one, right? The first. Yeah. The first line out was did, probably did, her. Yeah, did he spend an apple on the second one? No, no, because it's, it's a uh, dead line yeah. or you don't want to apple that, do you really? Yeah, yeah. Like, if it was a better hard, I would have, but yeah, no, obviously not on that. Oh no, the first one wasn't even a badly hurt anyway, so yeah, neither were badly hurt, so... Sad times. Wait, he doesn't have a bench? He do, no, he's got 11 men, apple, and uh... Three to roll a sick fight. Right, that diff is from my own build. Yeah. I was just surprised to see no bench here, but that's like just fine, I guess. <laughs> mm. Yeah, now we have a proper screen, except yeah, it's it's an interesting screen. It it bites you into making a hit on a blitzer. Let's see what Rick does. Uh, 
des points gros comme des jambons. Do you think that's the right place? No, no, it's not moving forward, is he? I wouldn't have minded just smashing in somewhere. I guess he's just breaking. He's just gonna, he's just gonna smash stuff up. <laughs> Can't stop him. It's a bit dodgy, that isn't it? Running back on, on turn four. Yeah, that, that, that's not what you usually want to do with movement five. Oh. I, I quite like going for this defense. Like you know, if you if you're gonna move laterally like this, I would have rather punched him. I think defenseless and you know mm -hmm. get the uh, move in here a bit. He has moved in here a bit. Yeah, I'd probably blitz that guy without block wrestle and make a cage based cage and say like, try if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see what difference can one that make against string five uh, cage pieces. Yeah. Why well, is? Oh, that's a sort of. Yeah. That's a nice yeah, I think so. Yep. Could have given him a good advantage, maybe for the rest of the drive, but didn't work. Still kind of awkward standing that dog up. Maybe blitz with him. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh, uh, I don't like hitting him so much, right? Because you, he's leaving him super weak here, given given Rick the field. I think that's giving too much spice, really. Oh. Basically, it's a uh, free walk on the left side for August now. Mm. And with the setback, August had last turn going backwards. This is like a Christmas present for them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would just move those two ogres up there. Even what well, using all the movement five that I have. But I guess this is also works. Yeah. Except by seeing the, the blood one is kind of pointless. I, I would probably use movement. Yeah. There. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Now it seems that he's indeed blitzing with that ogre. Yeah. He's side to sideline and, and probably basing with a JFI few more elves. Yeah, I like that. You you want him in the mix, don't you? Uh, making like you know, taking players out of the game. Fatten can always roll a mm -hmm. one if he if he dodges without dodge and, uh, and if he uses loads of players hitting him then that's fine as well, isn't it? Yep. Good spot to be in. As ogres. I didn't expect it. <laughs> I didn't expect it that way though. I did expect him to push, push there and base too. But I, you know, it's fair enough, right? If, he, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. He gets his mighty tackle, mighty blow hit in on the snot. <laughs> Does nothing really. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think that might be a turn too early, but. You have to make that at some point. Yeah. And then you just close your eyes and <laughs> pray that you don't hear a death sound. <laughs> oh. oh. Was it a 3 plus? No. Well, it doesn't put the reroll in. Interesting. Yeah, 2 plus. I guess he's, he wants to save a reroll for the one turn, doesn't he? But that I might think... have been worth it. I think it's worth it, especially because you you don't want to lose more players. Yeah. It's slightly scary, <laughs> if not just scary, letting your AV7 hit the floor. Yeah. And he's one guarder as well. Mm -hmm. Rick doesn't bother about dodging away or clearing the tackle zones <laughs> or anything, just smash him on three guys. <laughs> I moved the cage a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> oh, Greed's gets oh. the pow. <laughs> he stuns and a very important stun. Yeah, great stun, and now he can foul the other one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, <laughs> God. 
another cast. He's with three fouls and three cars. <laughs> okay, there the there the apple comes in. Good apple. And the sun top. Wow, brutal. I like how the orgs have done nothing. It's just it's just not blah fouls. <laughs> I think one KO was, was a blitz. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, Gnoble is doing the duty work. Yeah, incredible. Knocks him down, but hardly anything in the way. Yeah, it's just. There are not enough elves at this point. Yeah. Too many of them out. Too many of them stunned. You just have to sit and watch. <laughs> yep. And maybe hope for 1 in 36. Yeah, they, they happen, don't they? Yep. I don't think anybody, anybody in his <laughs> sane mind would score on turn 7 against Elves no. at this spot. No, but he's got to get forward one with the ball. I think I would have maybe moved him first, right? To just make sure you get that one square forward. Because at the moment, mm -hmm. you need a GFI as well, don't you? So I think I would have maybe moved him first to make sure mm -hmm. I have to re-roll for the, the move. Gets him well forward, though. I like that. Yeah, and look, from fashion, he's stuck with three re-rolls for two turns. Point for... Spending it there on the guard to dodge. Yeah. Oh, dodges in for the uphill. Yeah, it's a 25%. It's pretty good odds, I think. Especially yeah. with reroll. Yeah, he has the thing is in the wrestle. Like, wrestle mm -hmm. is so good. So good for hitting carriers. Even, even just by itself, like, obviously, wrestle strip is incredible, isn't it, uphill? But, uh, yeah, even wrestle, it's, it can do the job. Yep. Obviously he can't read this because he has to he has to make the bone head. Ooh. <laughs> A little bit of a tease. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Perfect. Perfect eight turn store with all this amazing. Yeah, and on top of that, some months of that. Yeah. <laughs> Eight for the one turn. So, would you try one turn here against Togus? If he plays this over. It's, it's hard, isn't it? I, you, yeah, okay, so he's not putting all snots on the line. Or is he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, well, yeah, you can't do it then, can you really, against sidesteppers like this? The only move yeah. eight. So now he has to hope that he can get all three of them dead. Yeah. Because there is not much of a bench. Yeah, two bench, so yeah, he'd have to he'd have to get rid of all three, but maybe like hope for a riot or, or a quick snap. But it's really yeah, hard right. to fill the squares without that, isn't it? I I don't think he can do that even with eleven players and movement eight. Maybe he can. I'm not like completely sure, but I feel like it doesn't work yeah. this way. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it would be. I think it'd be very difficult. Maybe he's maybe he's careful or no. But, uh, <laughs> for normal people, I think it's best just to give up. <laughs> give up the idea of it. <laughs> for, uh, maybe seven for a quick snap and uh, at yeah. the same time. Yeah, yeah. A quick, a quick snap. You've definitely got a shot then, haven't you? For sure. For sure, on quick snap, you can do. I think with a quick snap, you can feel those squares around those no blurs. Not not completely sure, but wait. You, how much you need? You need to be. You need cheese. You need Don't. every single player around him. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> but you need two hits with overnight, don't you? With yeah. quick snap. Yeah. So <laughs> how are you feeling? Squares after that first hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. It's tough. I think you could do it. It's I think you could do it, but I, it would be. It would be difficult. <laughs> Probably, maybe with 11. 
that's by the way one of the reasons I I, I, I find a new necromantic team in Blood Bowl three appealing. Well, in Blood Bowl twenty twenty, because they have uh, one turn defense right out of the box. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant one turn defense, isn't it? Yeah. Two two stun mm -hmm. firm and two sidestep straight away. And by the way, uh, imperial ability as well <laughs> with four four stun firms. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Blitz. Definitely can't one, one, oh, this is the second half. <laughs> but definitely can, oh, can, can Rick one turn? He's gone for the throw. Oh, he fails it. That would have been amazing just to have got him. Well, got him can one turn. There is no ball that he, he can get the ball. And then he has to hold on to it. By the way, if, if you're allowed LP, and imagine Blitz it up. Imagine it just... Like perfect weather. Uh, what would your plan for drive be? Um, it's got nine players. It's tough, isn't it? I mean, he didn't get close to stopping Rick on on offense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, being one nil down now, you definitely don't want to settle for the draw. It's Olga's. Ultimately, it's Olga's right. So I would have I would have tried a quick score here. <laughs> like I always try a quick score against Ogres to be like as an elf team. I always try a quick score against Ogres because I, I'm just thinking. Well, in ladder, I'm always thinking. You know, I'm just going to try and score as many touchdowns as I can and beat them as heavily as I can because Ogres are shit. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's a bit different here, right? Because there's no SPPs to get, and obviously they're not huh? as bad as a normal Ogre team because they've all got block. I think that may be kind of a mental trap. You just. You and me both, like, I'm also used to that type of play and that type of plan for, for game against all this, but it seems they may be the wrong decision here. I mean, you you had 11 and you failed to stop them, and now you have 9. Yeah. Like, like, let's assume that nobody is dead on your drive, and then how are you going to stop them? Yeah. It's, it's 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 a good point. It's a good point. But of course, even if you stole it out perfectly, um, they could just throw a snotling and and win anyway, couldn't they? So I think something like going for a turn like thirteen score, twelve. All these are not that fast. They are moving five, so you might force him to stretch, yeah. and that may be a point. Maybe that that's where you can try to steal the ball. I wouldn't mind just trying to stall as long as you can. Also, like, draw would probably be okay here for me as an elf if I was playing. Yeah, there's no break tackle to worry about, so you should be able to mm -hmm. keep it pretty safe. Just go when it's easy, I guess, right? Just don't really go into the set plan and, and just try and take what take what he gives you. And if you can score with no dice in four turns, then then good. And if, if you can do it on turn three without dice or turn five, you know, like just whatever, just try and score it safely. And, uh, and you know, if, you, if you're going to struggle to protect the ball, just bang it in or whatever, you know, like something like that, just go as safe as possible. But it is, it is a strange, like, it's a strange problem that you don't really get because you never play anybody with ogres, like, in a, in a game that matters, do you? <laughs> <laughs> like when they've got a chance really usually when you're playing ogres with elves you just like well how many how many am i going to score <laughs> how many am i going to beat them by but you know rick is rick is decent at blood bowl isn't he and and they've got all these block which is just crazy i was also thinking about that team and like m making a team for the league and the difference i i i would have made was sure hands so i'm not afraid of wood elves with street ball uh, instead of the leader. Other than that, it was basically the same team. But then I thought, well, always is unreliable and I just don't want to risk it. And it seems I I, I didn't know how he played his previous matches, I mean Rick, but I, I probably before that he, he got one draw and one win. <laughs> and here he seems to be in a very competitive position as well. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's doing great, doing great with the Ogres, Un unbelievable, and, and he qualified from Blitz Pit, <laughs> he was unbeaten in Blitz Pit, like, obviously, because he qualified, um, and just unbelievable, with, he's had. With, with the same team? Yeah, yeah, the same team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's quite funny. <laughs> Incredible. 
So yeah, Frighten's got all of his guys squashed here, hasn't he, by Ogres? This is... Uh... I think he shouldn't have tried to hit him. Yeah, I think I think maybe Fatten has been a bit too greedy on like just going for hits that were there. Mm -hmm. Where maybe he should have just rushed around and it, it it feels just awkward when all your arrows are in the same spot yeah, exactly. against the bus team. Okay. Yeah, I thought, I thought he was gonna go up and hit this one. Yeah, me me too. <laughs> because that's moving forward. Yeah. And weird. Well, this way he gets to Oof. hit the ogre again. <laughs> I, do, I don't like that. No. Well, maybe right. Maybe I'm wrong not liking that. I mean, he, his plan is probably to crack him in like that. I don't know how it's called, but when elves just bait bait an opponent in the, into their own half and then try to run around him. Yeah. I think he ran out of Maybe time that. there, right? I think he was setting up that 2D. Mm -hmm. Oh my, oh my god! What, what, what? Rick is on a 5 plus 4 plus! <laughs> a 2 plus! He gets the plus! And he's KO'd him! <laughs> what was that? That was amazing! Yeah, double I don't know how much time he spent thinking on that play. <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. And yeah, yeah, so that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like Fatten ran out of time to make that hit, and because he didn't get it, Rick rolled the crazy Rick dice and just smashed the ball away. <laughs> amazing. Wow. I think Owls must be panicking now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, I would have felt completely safe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I wouldn't wasn't considering where the ball was or anything, just thinking like, you know, yeah, it might have moved up or whatever, but now all of a sudden, it's terrible. Okay. Yep. I think that was oh wait, maybe he he is all his eight treasure movement then it's it's a day probably. Well it seems that I mean like Fog Noblas are out now, right? Yeah. Not, not many of them left. Yeah, he has been removing the Noblars. There's only only one Noblar uh -huh. left. Uh, couple got sent off. And, uh, you know, some hurt. Uh huh. I mean, there are basically just two guys left now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is about as many orgs as there are elves. <laughs> I think we will see another dodge here. Like, if you go for a 3 plus 4 plus, you definitely go for another 4 plus. Yeah. It oh, it sense. works! Ah. Oh, man. Awesome stuff. But I think it was worth hitting the guy who wasn't got dodge. Because, like. You. He, he's bonehead, so like he's not in a tackle zone, but I don't think it's really worth facing him when he's got blotch anyway, right? He could have just yeah. hit the guy who hasn't got the dodge. Well, looks like facing worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he got some elves where he wants them to be by facing there. Yeah, yeah, it worked out great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh! <laughs> And then realised he realised this guy was gonna get hit and thought, whoops. Maybe it was okay. So he's probably gone for a draw at this point. Yeah. I mean he is scoring in on turn fifteen or or later. So ideally he's scoring turn sixteen. Yeah, unless this guy boneheads, then you could mm -hmm. run through and pass it to him maybe and score, but he, he hasn't boneheaded, so yeah, yeah, he's just got to play for a draw. Now. It seems diggable, to be honest. Oh, he's got another Wait. hit on the ball, Wait. hasn't he? Look, double GFI. Oh, I missed that. Like, 
<laughs> this Soga, this specific Soga, he's blitzing the ball three times. <laughs> that's spots where we don't expect him to. Well, that's one of the spots we expected him second time. <laughs> it's just a four plus. Somehow I also thought that the ball is safe here. Yeah. Maybe maybe the one minute turn is doing a thing. Yeah, to for people. sure. Yeah, yeah. One minute turns is, is hard, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that's that, that's another layer of difficulty playing against a proper opponent as well. Yeah. I mean, usually like you can think about everything and just make your best play, but when when your opponent is good and you don't have much time, it's stressful. Okay, so he's, he can't he can't hit the ball without a dodge. Um, I think he may go for it. I mean, this is probably your best spot. Except maybe not. Be maybe not because it's a it's a blodge guy. If it wasn't a blodge guy, maybe going for the ball with a four plus dodge would have been a okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and he's getting to double base him now, which is nice. I thought he doesn't have anything really to cover the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <Or wait>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still tough. Oh wait, he, he he can get the ball to 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 a thrower. No, no. That's another option. Oh, and probably very important stun. Yes. Huge. Gonna be a GA fight to score, but he should be able to get that. That, that knockdown is, is great, isn't it? For getting everyone around on that bonehead. Huh. Yeah, this is that was very nice. Very nice move. He's got to re roll this. <laughs> That's out of re rolls, though. Yep, and that means GA fight without re roll next turn. Yeah. Unless Rick decides to blitz the ball. <laughs> 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 That's where it goes from the six plus dodging. <laughs> oh god, oh. This, is the, this is the bonehead turn, maybe. Oh, third one. <laughs> he rolled it. <laughs> he probably had to say no point. That was that point, probably. Yeah. yeah. That was wild, three in a row. Oh, it's four. <laughs> Five! He would have boneheaded everybody! And he only got one that he re rolled. That is crazy, isn't it? Yep. Imagine this happening in Rigsaw fans. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Oh, he can, he can hand off to the catcher instead of GFIing. Oh, pretty... no, that's, that gives reroll. Yeah, and it oh, was a one! It, been... <laughs> it was a one. So now it's a one turn itself. Okay. Yeah. Like, the second, the second half was crazy because of Ogre Ball Blitzes, but in terms of what Ogre's achieved in the second half, it's, it's not much really. They didn't mm. stop the score, they didn't get any rules to help them with stopping the score. It was just, I think the first half that was crazy. Easy pickup and uh, just grinding through all of numbers and then a turn score. Yeah. So. I, I think I was played it right that like scoring a turn 16, uh, giving a small chance for a very unreliable one turn. Yeah. And well, saying draw is fine when I lost so many holes in the first half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From where they were, the draw mm -hmm. looks okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Lucky that didn't happen in the first half. 
There's no uh, no app at all for Rick, so he, he could get high rolled by somebody. Um, heavily. <laughs> Definitely nothing good. A kite, so. Nice kick. Need to, yeah, the, the, I think the kick is close to ideal. Yeah. Just one GFI. Pearl, pearl the handle. So you did. Does the right thing, activating scouting for the bonehead. Yeah. It, it's better to try it, and then if it's the bonehead, to try a horrible stodge. Yeah. Oh, he gets. He, he's in range. He's in one GFI range, and. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, that's the perfect animation that, that the Nova made for, for this match. <laughs> like, showing his butt. Amazing. Absolutely. Incredible amazing. game. Yeah, really, really, really cool game, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I think that it was kind of boring until the point where Locus started dodging. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and almost every turn after that was a very interesting one. Yeah, yeah, really cool. So August going strongest, I so should put him to 2-1-0. Uh, yeah, yeah, but one of those is the bye week, right? So he's 1-1-0 he's one, one, yep. one, one, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the table. I, I think it's still a remarkable score with, with August. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. Like genuinely, I would I would be made up if I drew a game in this with Orcas, and then to be unbeaten after after two games is crazy. I think. <laughs> and the second it's... game is Gdanik versus Shawnee, and uh, yeah, neither of them streamed this. Uh, unfortunately, it was really late at night, and uh, so no one no one saw this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I was going to like watch it, but uh, Gdanik was like, there's no point, because as you can see there, 16 armor breaks to 2, it was just an absolute dicing, and uh, he just slaughtered Shawnee. So that, that must have been nice for him, eh? <laughs> yeah, like, numbers show it, 16 against 2, and it's human against human, right? Yeah, yeah, um, only, only, only one skill different. Um, Gadenik has a block thrower and Shawnee has a guard ogre. That's the only that's the only thing different between the two teams. And obviously in this case the dice. <laughs> and the final match of the week is Kanor uh, beating Elliot 2 0 with his Skaven. No, oh, that's amazing. That's one. <laughs> yeah. Um it was just it was quite impressive really, just uh Removed a few orcs and uh, and yeah, just just turned him over and got quite a, quite a nice, comfortable two nil win against Elliot, who is we all know is a great coach, isn't he? He is. And here's the table after the after the third round of games. And what I can say is that two most interesting teams I mean, in those two spots, Orgas and Rats, don't really expect them. Yeah. I mean, in a one minute format, the Bash team should dominate. Well, Ogis is definitely a Bash team, but not your average Bash team. <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly not. Uh, but yeah, yeah, crazy, really. Yeah, Th three undefeated teams, quite a few draws, quite tight this division, isn't it? Um, Eliod, unfortunately, uh, looks looks like he's done for though with three losses. Uh, it's very surprising to say a team like Orcs. Losing three times, but that may be dice, didn't see all the games. But uh, also very surprising that humans are not doing that well. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I'm, yeah, I'm quite surprised. Right. If you look at the rules for team building, you probably expect humans to be very good and strong, and somehow they're not doing that. Yeah. And, and in this group as well, right? With Pro Elves, you think, you'd think they'd match up okay against those and rats and obviously ogres. Um, yeah, a bit, bit underperforming from the human teams. I think that humans actually have only one bad matchup in this in this group with orcs, and that's probably it. They they're supposed to be good against bats, against elves, against ogres. So very strange to see this. And then next week you've got to take on the the ogres against Rick. How do you feel about that? 
Well, uh, I, I probably should use uh, the match we saw as some guideline to help me prepare for that game. And, well, I, I kind of like my chances. I think that August are not always picking the ball up on every attempt. August are not always just uh, going without bone hands for the whole game. So, I think as play rounds against those Ogres, you will have a window or two to win the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and even if things are going well for them, they, they still just run like the danger of that turn that we saw against Fatin where he had the f four boneheads. Like, if that happens, that's going to give you a shot, yeah, isn't it? I, I think you can always expect that turn to happen at least once. It's just the timing of that turn. Is it going to come too late or is it going to be soon enough? It's just something you don't know. But you have to prepare for it being soon enough. Pointless to, to expect late. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Gadenix taking on Fatin. That should, that that again, like as we were talking about, that looks rough. And and Kano versus Shoni, they these these look hard games for the elves and the rats, doesn't it? Up against the humans. Yeah, I think I think the humans should have an, an upper hand, as we talked about a few minutes ago. Definitely, I think humans it should be good against those faster gel teams. So the first game of Group B was uh, Inarian getting beaten by Elves. Uh, I didn't see this game, um, but yeah, I mean, what do you expect? It's it's Elves versus Halflings. It's rough for the Halflings, isn't it? I I don't think you have any good options. Like Ogis, for example, have six guys who can go blitz, hit you with a block, and they have open five, which is not much, but compared to three man, it's, it's, it's a huge difference. Yeah. yeah, and of course, take root as well, then they just take taken out completely, aren't they? Then the movement zero. <laughs> So probably your game plan as Halflings here is uh, you want to fall that side, so you don't get mighty block hits usually, you just fall and how that works. And also you hope that your Halfling Master Chef, if you if you roasted it, uh, does some magic, like yeah. getting all rerolls out of elves. Yeah. Which yeah. sometimes may happen, by the way. I think elf, elf rosters for this uh, for this team building rules uh, roster and two rerolls, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe uh, the chef can do something, but it has to steal all two rerolls and uh, not kick off luck on that shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And this this is the second match, and this was hilarious. Uh, you can see you can see it's ten armor breaks versus twelve, but um, if you look on here, yeah, three casualties sustained for the for the dwarves. Uh, Calcium just beat the oh crap my. out of Mister Page. <laughs> just it was crazy. <laughs> It was the exact opposite of what you'd expect humans versus dwarves to be. He just he just beat him up and, and beat him easily, pretty much. Yeah, they, I mean, humans struggle against dwarves. They they don't get armor breaks usually. They they struggle to get through if dwarves don't don't fail at positioning, which is not that easily. If you're smashing back every time <laughs> on that ABI, yeah, like. Quite surprising result. Yeah, yeah, wild. I mean, Calcium is the original, the most dangerous man in Blood Bowl, he calls himself, and uh, <laughs> guys. So funny, by the way, that we see in Group I, uh, humans are not performing that well against rats and, and elves as we think they should. And in Group B, <laughs> they perform exceptionally well against dwarves. <laughs> yeah. They should not supposed to win. Like I, I can definitely understand the draw. I mean, dwarves can always say it's a draw and get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how they get the ball out of that? <laughs> yeah. <But> the one <laughs> Yeah, incredible. That's something. <laughs> and finally, it was my game versus Dionysian, which, uh, which was which was quite a nice game to watch actually. Um, as you can see, I got more armor breaks. I I, I was definitely luckier than him overall. Um, I managed to like I managed to chip a guard early, and uh, you know just pretty much just stopped him from scoring. Um, then on his defense, he played amazingly. He totally stopped me from scoring, um, except he failed a one in nine on turn sixteen, and then I made two GFIs and a blizzard to score. <laughs> so and and what. 
Tam. Zjedł paski. A, okay. Okay. What, what, what was that, sorry? Well, uh, uh, the pass, I, I see on the screen that you made one pass with, with, with the dwarves. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't remember doing the pass. I'll be honest with you. I I, I forget the pass. Uh, but I was like, I was. I think I probably just did it after it was nil nil, right? I think I think after I stopped him scoring. Oh no! I, yeah, yeah. I, I nearly counter scored. I, I stopped him scoring and then nearly counter scored. So I did a pass oh. to try to try to score. That was it. I remember I now. But yeah, in the end. So Sorry, carry on. No, I, I wanted to ask you a question. How did it feel like when you play against two balls that don't have block? Like, is it easy to deal with them? Yeah, it's 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 weird. Like, kind of like, obviously, normally the break tackle is what's scary about them, isn't it? Um, but mm -hmm. for dwarves, you can't really like just casually tag them and get them out of the game anyway because you're so slow. So like, Dio, Di I mean, Dio played with them pretty well, I think, and. There was times when maybe I could have like done a cheeky one D at them or, or a cheeky uphill, but um, he ended up protecting them really well, like on defense, and he had one as reserve, and I couldn't, I couldn't tag him, and he ended up hitting my guy with a ball, and uh, on a one D, and uh, he like you know both down into a both down, and, uh, and then let me do the, and let me do the double G if I had to score. So I was super super lucky. I mean, Dio played great that game. And, uh, and I was just pretty much lucky. I'd pr it probably, you know, almost certainly should have been a nil-nil. Uh, but there you go. Got the look a dog win. Well, good for you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the table. Uh, me and PC, 2-0 and all at the top with the, with the dwarves. And uh, Nareen and Mr. Page at the bottom. You know what I can say is that Spots number one, two, and seven are very expectable, <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that I would definitely bet on if I just saw the teams. And which is what what is surprising is that Mr. Page is not doing that well. But as we saw, one of the games was a Dyson uh, against humans, and other two games I think he lost against dwarves and against chores, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, he probably didn't get his best matchups here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, he, and of course he does. He does have the death roll, which is uh, which is a bit, oh, a bit of a loose cannon. <laughs> right. No, the death roll. Well, death roll is definitely a menace against other dwarves, yeah. and against shorts as well. And I'm surprised he lost there. Maybe, maybe also Dave was his favorite. Did see the games. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it, like everyone knows how to play, don't they? In in, the, in these like in this league, so like it, uh, dice are going to decide a fair amount of the matches. To be fair, I think at least one or two each way in each group should be like just dice deciding. Yeah. Especially because like you got you got very good coaches in in this league, and like when when skill levels is assigned. Many of the times we can say that Dice here at this moment decided the game. It's very often you can say that. Yeah, I agree. And these are the fixtures for next week. We've got, uh, well, all those are. Which, which look interesting to you, Chris? The, the least interesting to me looks the first one. I think it's another page in a book of suffering of an Aryan. <laughs> very good. <laughs> And the most oh wait, I say a dwarf against dwarf. Like on one hand, it's it's rather boring. It's probably the worst matchup in Blood Bowl two that I think exists. On the other hand, like the the league wise, the like group positioning wise, it's one of the most interesting games because uh, the leader of Group B will will or may be decided in that game. Yeah. Uh, yours against Purple Chest. So I think this is a uh, is the game you need to highlight <laughs> next week. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Or maybe make someone else highlight it as you're the one <laughs> participating. <laughs> well, I, I think the Andy Devo versus Dio is pretty close, right? Because at the end of the day, you would expect, you know, like there's going to be a few people on two wins after this. You know, like only one person's going to be top, and it's going to be interesting to see who who joins, you know, in the top in the running for the. In the running for the second place, if you like. Well, 
I think the, oh, 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 like the second and third match are both interesting because Dark uh, Elf against Chorf's Chorf's like that is definitely an interesting matchup. It's not a developed Chorf team, it has uh, very significant weak spots which elves can abuse. So I wouldn't say that Chorf's are highly favorable there. They, they're slightly favorable in this matchup, but elves can definitely. I, I would like to say elves are doing something in that beats dwarves, uh, dwarves in this case. So I think this is a, probably, like in a vacuum, the most interesting matchup if you just show me the teams. But in terms of group position, definitely dwarf on dwarf. Well, there you go. Um, thank you very much, Cruz, for joining us for this. Yeah, that was funny, <laughs> especially the first part. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy game. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.